asthma affects more than 30 million people all around the world. Its cause is not yet understood, and yet there is no cure for it. When I'm getting an attack, first, you can be so normal. I would feel a little bit dizzy. And then I feel like as though these ribs are now cracking each other. There's a way they contract like this. Nasi is one of the victims burdened with various symptoms of asthma that can be triggered anytime. Now when they contract, I feel that I can no longer inhale the air. In Intebe kuba itababiri cyarubashita kabale Nkola ni kitongo le cyasibavye I work with Civil Aviation Authority at Entebbe International Airport Ndi single mother Nina abana babiri I'm a single mother of two children Mukisa Kasmil and Namudu Nancy A boy and girl that's the blessing God gave me They I call them my investments so I love them so much. My name is Namu Dunasi Ivy. I, I love God first and foremost. I love dancing. I love singing though, <laughs> not so good at it. I love a number of things. I love fashion, a lot of things, any but a few to mention. Namu Du, Yamana Ango Muwala. Namu Du is my daughter. When she reached three years old, we started seeing signs of allergies. We started seeing signs of allergies. Her eyes would turn red and she would get swellings all over her body. She got cough. We took long to realize because we were treating allergies. When she reached four years old, that's when the doctors told us that she has asthma. Yes, I would, I would, whenever the weather would change, like, or maybe I inhale or smell dust, my, uh, my skin would run a rush, and then I, I would have blocked nose, plus I would have cough, those were the symptoms. I would be rushed to the hospital, but since I was young, I would not really understand what was going on. But in my family, we have no history of asthma. I also consulted from her father's family and they don't have any history of asthma, which means that she just started suffering from asthma. asthma ya jabuzi. So I still remember the first time I think I got a serious attack. I was around 4 or 5. It was at night, around 3 p.m. I remember by then I had like a short blue night dress and I think I got flu. I was sleeping with my mother. So she brought me an orange. I failed to eat it. And I remember we had a maid. So my mother woke up the maid and she put me, my mother put me on her back. Actually, first we walked from the home to the, as we were going to the clinic. But as we reached on the way, I think I could no longer walk. So my mother carried me on her back. And I remember she fell in a ditch and hit her niche, came back home with a wound. All I remember was when I was young, being rushed in the hospital with my mom and dad. Asthma alumidenas. Nancy suffered from asthma for 12 years since she was four years old. We took her to different hospitals. 
The doctors treated her, but as you know, asthma doesn't get healed. The doctors treated her and gave her medicine. Most of the hospitals in Entebbe, they know Nancy. And during that time, whenever I took her to the hospital, the doctors didn't ask me what she was suffering from. They would just say, come, we know what has brought you here. Nancy was also known in some clinics in Kampala. Whenever I took her there, the doctors would say, oh, it's the time. So when I reached around primary one, uh, I was at Star Primary School. And yes, despite the fact that, yes, I had allergies or asthma, for me by then I, I, I thought I had allergies. Asthma affected Nancy so much in her studies. And she didn't enjoy her life as a young child. Nancy wasn't the child who plays with her friends because whenever I saw her outside during the rainy season, I would call her to come in the house. She always had to be wearing a scarf and a sweater. She always had to be well covered because I didn't want her to catch a cold. I didn't want her to sniff in dust, but generally we live in an environment full of dust. Then there is a time we had sports day at school and I wanted to, to, to engage in running. And I remember my class teacher was called Madame Teacher Jennifer. And as we went for the sports day, my mother called Teacher Jennifer and told her that Nancy should not run. I felt so bad. I said, why shouldn't I run? And yet I wanted to also engage in this sports day. I was so ready to run and everything. I, I didn't run. I did not understand why. I was so disappointed, but anyway, of course, they had to obey. I didn't do any activity, and that's how I was from that time as I grew up, and the sickness would also grow. I would not engage in any sports. I wouldn't do any hectic work. Like, I didn't I didn't enjoy as a young child at all. And I had no control over the rain because whenever it started showing signs of raining, my heart would start pumping. I would know that now Nancy is going to get an asthma attack. And also one thing I remember, before the weather changes completely, maybe to a chilly, chilly weather or rainy, rainy kind of sign, I remember I used to get attacks before the weather itself could change or I would get symptoms and my mother would tell me that means it's going to rain. So it was as if I would foretell the weather in that kind of way. Even when it rained in Kampala, she would get affected from this side. That's when I started taking herbal medicine. They used to buy me some yellow jerry cans, some yellow jerry cans of aloe vera, what they call a chigaji in Luganda. And I used to take them for over three years. I remember at first it was so sour, but my dad would come home and he would teach me that you just do this. So I reached a point when even that aloe vera oil gadget is no longer sour. I got so used to it. They brought one which has sugar. We went to all those herbalists that would advertise themselves over the radios. Whenever we listened to them at night, we'd go there early in the morning, but they were so expensive. Our sideboard was filled with bottles of herbal medicine. She had to drink a bottle top from every herbal medicine. And I also had to put the medicine in her tea. But all that was in vain. They used to mix some gel and some tube. Imagine eating a tube. I had to use them. I think they were digestible to, to clear because the, both the gel and the tube ha, had, had this kind of mint taste. Like how you eat sweet peps and you feel like as though you're unblocking your nose and your chest and everything. So it's what I would use. I took herbals, a number of herbals that I don't even buy. I had very, very many jerry cans. You got school when you've taken medicine, what? P7, the same story. When I reached P7, I joined boarding. But my boarding life was really hard. My friends would be in boarding. They spend the whole time at school. They never go back home. 
on my side every week i would go back home every week atena nge bwonkoseza her sickness also affected me in one way or another. I wasn't settled at my workplace. Whenever I got a phone call from her school, my heart pumped so much. And during that time, I also got pressure. So I used to use inhalers. One is called a rescue inhaler. That rescue inhaler, you use it um, when you're feeling the attack. Whenever feeling the attack, they, they tell you it depends. You first use two puffs. If you still feel it, you add more puffs until over 12. So these that you see right here up to this are the preventive inhalers. They are the ones I used to, the ones I used to use uh, two in the morning and two in the evening they are the preventive ones whether I'm going to do any exercise or any hectic work I have to first inhale a preventive inhaler this is how they look like in these boxes they are short and small but it's according to your they give an inhaler according to the stage in which you are so I guess these are, these are the ones for the third stage they have this color where you see the different colors it's because this is light green this is a little bit darker it's because they are from different companies, I guess. And these longer ones, there are really few, but there were many. They are the rescue ones. They are the ones I used to, to use when I get an attack for some relief. They look like this in these boxes. For them, they are longer than these ones. And they are also given to you according to the asthma stage in which you are that the ones I used to use. Then, when I reached my form one, those inhalers, there is a way they stopped being effective. And even though I would inhale how many puffs, they would not work. I would still faint. I would still go in a drip. And it happened a number of times, especially with smoke at school. But even though it was any other factor, be it coldness, be it dust, be it stress, it would just hit me off to a blackout. Whenever I took Nancy to the hospital, no doctor gave me an assurance that Nancy would ever get healed. The doctors would tell me that asthma doesn't get healed. So Nancy's life depended so much on inhalers and medicine and also injections. So I didn't have hope and no one gave me hope in the hospital that Nancy would ever get healed of asthma. So whenever, when I'm getting an attack, first, you can be so normal, really normal. You've been there, you, you, you're peaceful and everything. And then you start feeling, first I would feel a little bit dizzy. From dizziness i would feel at the around my should i call it diaphragm i don't know but the end of my ribs they would start they would start paining and then i feel like as though these ribs are now cracking each other there's a way they contract like this now when they contract i feel that i can no longer inhale the air in the atmosphere when i'm to inhale I'll inhale, but then even breathing out would be so bad. Would would be so hard. So that's that what that's what causes that wheezing effect. And when remember when you're in that process, you can't breathe. These ribs really contract so much. And by the time that attack stops, your ribs and your chest are really really paining. They are really, really paining so much. I would have some difficulty in sitting. I could not stand that well because there is always a lot of pain in the ribs. You cannot bend. Sometimes I would lose appetite. I would not be happy at all. Time reached and I thought it wasn't asthma because she would faint abruptly. She would just faint, but the doctors explained to us in the hospital that asthma has stages. Because Nancy reached at stage three, which is the severe stage. 2016, the 
asthma doctors from Chisubi Hospital came and visited our school. They're visiting different schools in Entebbe and checking out for students who have asthma, how they can help them, the medicine they can give them. So they reached our school and they were checking class by class. The procedures we used to go through, um, first, there is some... I've forgotten its name, but it's some instrument. They give you to blow air in, and they would see the strength at which you would, it would detect the strength at which you can breathe. So there is that instrument. I've really forgotten its name. You blow it, and it shows the strength of your lungs. They would also inject some antibiotics, but then their effect was to show if you have allergies or not. So if you have an allergy, they would leave maybe, of course, an allergy on your hand wherever it's injected. If you don't have allergies, your skin would remain normal. Then they would take off a sample of um, the faces, and it's what they would get and they check. So when they came at school, they, they reached my class, they checked a number of students. Some had allergies, some had what? When they injected me, I did not show any allergy signs. But when they took my samples for more diagnosis, um, they they came back to school with their reports and they had finished checking the whole school from form one to senior three and among the students who had asthma I had the greatest asthma at stage three in the whole school imagine a school of around 700 900 plus students and with a number of them with asthma because people would get asthma attacks at my school whenever it's cold you see people being uh, rushed to the sick bay on the stretchers and all. So I had the greatest asthma in the whole school at stage three. But asthma has five stages. Stage three being a very critical one, but stage four is also worse. And stage five is the death stage where people with asthma die. Sorry, stage five. Naye? I didn't lose hope because I didn't say that Nancy is now sick. Let her leave studies. Nancy used to get attacks, but she was so brave because she would get an attack and she would be the first to wake up in the morning and tell me that I want to go to school. And in Form 2, that's when I actually started declining because the asthma was frequent. Like, you know, of course, even psychologically, it can be triggered. And it's like how they can tell you that you have HIV AIDS. You could you could have been fine before, even though you see the symptoms. But the moment they tell you have HIV, there is a way it affects you psychologically. So me also being told that you're at stage 3, at some point it would affect me psychologically and when I got an attack I would be like eh, so this is stage 3 you always have it in your mind like that they would tell me that stage 3 is short so moment you see that it's it's not reducing just know you're going in it's increasing it's increasing so in my form I started declining in class I remember in my first term in my fa- in my form when I used to be the first Form two first time I was the third all over the class, the whole form two class, even other streams. Because I, I always knew myself as being the best, I was so disappointed being the third in class. I reached second term, I was the ninth because now it became very hard. It was so hard for me to balance my books and because now the attacks were really strong that when I got an attack, I would be so weak, so weak to do anything. And when I, when whenever we are going to do exams, that's when I would read something, and that's what I would go with in the examination room. So I declined from three third term. I was the eleventh. Then I reached a point, and I said, I think things are just becoming hard. I will not go back to my normal position. Then I went to form three. Same story. I got attacks, a number of them, but they would leave. I remember if was it in Form 3 that they injected me some medicine called hydrocortisone and I turned yellow-orange. If you see me from the sun, I would turn something like yellow-orange. I had really big cheeks because that there's a way that medicine makes you gain, gain weight. I would always be weak. I would never go for any sports, not netball, not what. I would never be around dust. I could never be... I, my mother, my friends would always walk from school to home. I always admired. But then my mother would come for me 
from the gate up to home every day taking me to school so it was not so easy because you enjoy to do what others can do and then you cannot do it the only thing that i could do is take part in at school was there is debating but anything concerned with sports yes i would also dance i remember in form 2 form 1 i used to really dance at school with that i got a lot of popularity because of dancing being a best performer when i reached form 3 and this sickness really increased my dancing started reducing because whenever i would try to because i danced the dance hall type of dance but whenever i would start because there is a lot of jumping you overwork your body i would lose energy very quickly not even losing energy my ribs would start reacting i start coughing so so much i start feeling so so bad my lungs became weak as time went on and so i stopped in my form 3 i stopped dancing i didn't dance actually in my form 3 then that year also ended form 3 they use aggregates they never used to give us positions but i thank god that in my form 3 i never went to the second grade i would always be in the first grade then i reached form 4 and i went at my secondary school in tebe secondary school they had hostels so i joined hostel being a candidate class it was in fact was yes it was almost every week that i would come back home literally i was partially there and partially boarding i would miss very many lessons when i go back to 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 school they actually separated us that those who have asthma are going to be sleeping in a specific room so you sleeping with this you with your particular asthmatic people is going to be even worse they leave you people to sleep they do not wake you up you got school at around 3 pm and it was even worse that because when it's cold they would not allow us to go because it was a distance from school to to hostel so sometimes they would not allow us to go to school until it's a little bit shiny but even when it shone and i had to go to 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 school when i reached the gate i'm already down and they would call my mom ne tufuna ne neblaiza mkwano kwange ya jimperezo we also got a neblaiza which my friend sent me from abroad so we'd no longer rush to the hospital they would give us medicine to put in the neblaiza called nebules nebules it is an electric appliance you use electricity to operate it it comes in this bag the company is called omron So whenever I used to get an attack before I would black out I would use this nebulizer though if you black out it doesn't work for you they use the the injection straight to the vein and the heart I used to use this mask it's like an oxygen mask because this too is like maybe a simplified oxygen machine if I could say I put this right here and i put this mask on so that's how i used to use it that's how i used to use it and when it didn't work that's when i went for the drips the drips they use i'm not feeling which takes 4 hours it was in first term that i got to know about activity and holy city plus the the brotherly ministries from my mother nari mpulide ko mkwano gwange nga ajogera ko i had had a friend of mine talking about holy city but she didn't explain a lot about it she would just say that near my home there is a church called holy city so i never used to give it attention but while in my office i was watching videos on youtube that's when i saw holy city i saw man of god praying for people and they were getting healed people were jubilating and getting instant miracles so one morning i told nasi do you know what on sunday we are going to holy city ku sunday holy city you need to raise 
rise to a level of believing that prayer can change your life. And I tell you to happen. I don't give up on the low chi. 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 Jesus. The servant of God has joined the peace center in the power of the glory of Jesus Christ. Lord is using man of God. General. General Maccabi. Miracles are manifested in the peace center. In the name of Jesus. They are walking. They are walking. This is incredible. When my mother told me about Holy City, I mean not less concerned with my faith but my health. I did not know maybe what life could bring ahead and I did not understand when I was young from my maybe top class to my P3 I didn't know what I was suffering from. From my P4 to P7 I knew I had asthma but when I joined Senior 1 I started seeing that people out there enjoy life, people out there are fine my fellow agements were really having fun after that after classes people go for football people go for sports i always remain in class so i reached that point especially in my form 3 because i've loved dancing all my life and when i realized that i couldn't even go on stage to dance i i got so tired of the situation So how I even became ready and how I can advise anyone to become ready you're not you're never going to be ready unless you're tired of your situation because for me my favorite number is number 1 and I want to be number 1 all my life so I saw that my achievements are now being blocked people were now even those that had never performed better than I were now performing better and trust me they were now seeing a total failure and I said no this has to stop when I reached my form 4 and I would imagine me not getting a first grade that was totally going to waste my name because I already had my name of performing well despite the fact that I had asthma I said no this has to be over so by the time I went to be prayed for at Holy City by brother Ronnie I said this must go. I have to go back to the normal me. Me dancing, me being happy, me performing well, and I said this situation has to be over. So I had one heart of fighting the devil. So when we went to Holy City, I went there when I had really difficulty in breathing. So looking at the people with this machines i don't know the corsets all those metals in their legs people with big big ulcers on their legs people with very many different problems when they were all being patient i, I also had to increase my patience so when we went to the peace center and then we had to sit and wait for the man of god i just wanna be with you i just wanna be with you When we came for peace center I saw people with different challenges but because I had seen instant miracles on YouTube I was firm and I was eagerly waiting for the man of God to arrive I was waiting and saying that Jesus Christ as I've seen other people getting healed ngabwendabya balalanga bawona I know we shall also live holy city with happiness when Nancy has got healed.
for the first time. We are happy to see you. Very happy to see you. You are welcome. When the servant of God was praying for me, I really felt as though my whole body was heavy. It was paining because whenever I would get an attack, and after the attack, I would have that pain in my ribs, the chest. I would have swollen cheeks, but even my body would be paining. That I never wanted anyone to touch me like this because it would really hurt. Just a finger touching me would really pain. So when they touched me, I—I f- I mean, when the man of God touched me, I felt power within me. The healings. Yes, yes. There is a way that pain disappeared. And then there is a way that chest got this relief of, I wasn't feeling any kind of wheezing. My ribs are always contracted. If you can imagine a bone to a bone cracking, there's a way they all released themselves and they spaced themselves. And I would inhale. I was so happy. get affected i started working with my friends from home to 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 further rather from school to home i would not get any problems even though it trained i would walk up to home and i would never get sick then the next morning my mother takes me i bring back myself my mother started also being free and she would let me at least do something she would not get scared like before because before you'd be like mommy i want to go out with friends she would get scared that you're going to get a problem but now she, would, she was also relieved and i was happy to see that she was relieved then my performance started um uh improving as it was before I would feel so good about myself because before I'd lost some confidence. I said, now what if I even, I, I would even, I even stopped debating. I thought, what if I go to debate and I fear all those eyes and I get something in front of everyone. But I remember I went for a nationals debate in Form 4 that term. I was even among the best and I was awarded because it's a national debate all over Uganda. I was among the best and I was awarded. I did not get any problems. I sat for my UNEB, my UCE, and I also got a first grade. But um, I was so thankful to God and I've been so thankful because since the time the servant of God touched me, I've not any other symptoms. Ah, never some comment, Katina, so I thank Jesus because. greater than any other adversity. What I advise viewers all over the world is no matter how big your situation may be, the first thing you have to bring ahead in your life is God. It is praying. Because if you don't pray, your situation is going to show that it's much greater than any other thing. You're going to lose hope. You're going to lose a number of things because you're seated and you're being miserable. You now want to become um, uncomfortable being uncomfortable instead of being comfortable being uncomfortable. And it's only the spirit that can guide you. There is nothing you're going to get without prayer. All my life I've lived praying. I cannot say that there is something I've, I've achieved without praying. All that was about praying. The strength I had, I was a child, but I know I, I would get healed. I reached my secondary, I never lost hope, I knew I was sick, but I would still get where I wanted. I wanted my first grade in Form 4, I got it, but because I used to pray and it was all strength, because in whichever situation you are, people are going to talk, people are going to despise, you're going to fall, but 
even when you fall, you need God to help you to rise up and you dust yourself off. So it's always your strength in prayer and prayer goes with faith. And also faith has to be put in actions, not only to say that I have faith, it must prevail. So I used my faith and with faith I saw the power of God in my life. That even when I was sick, I was never let down by my sickness. I got whatever I wanted and he has provided. There is no day I ever went to the hospital and remained with a debt. It would always be paid. There is no day that I ever got sick and someone abandoned me. I've been loved. So it's always God. But the moment you do not bring God first in your life, that's when you find that people are running away from you. But And God's things, are, they have their own time. And God's time is the best time. It's all about being patient. moment you're patient, you're going to achieve everything. Whatever will hit you will not take away your power because only God can give you that spiritual strength. Brother Ernie, I thank you so much for praying for me. You're truly, you're truly a blessed man of God. And I pray that God gives you life to always continue working for him and healing all the sick. God has really greatly used you and I know he's still using you. I received my deliverance from Holy City and even others out there can receive the same deliverance that I got. But I love you so much. I really appreciate for I really appreciate all the prayers and the fasting and everything. May God bless you. Hey, oh, 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 oh,